Welcome back everyone. Today I have a fun project for you. It's actually a few projects packed into one video. We're going to be making a minimalist wallet and this is really just a nice simple way to hold a few cards, some money, keys, and other small things. We're also going to make in two different holders, one for a chapstick and one for a lighter. And to bring it all together, we're going to make a lanyard so you can hold all of them at once or hold them separately. And this is a great project for all skill levels. It's super easy and you can really crank a lot of these out in a short amount of time. The pattern is free and it comes with a list of supplies and also links for those supplies if you're struggling to find materials. But like always, if you're new to the channel, grab that download and let's get started. All right, starting off with the supplies for the minimalist wallet, this is gonna be the first project. For the main fabric, you're gonna need three inch elastic, and it definitely has to be at least three inches because three inches is the perfect size so it doesn't go over the edges of your cards and it doesn't leave too much of your card exposed. And surprisingly, for the three inch band elastic, there's a lot of colors out there, but I'm gonna also give you some more ideas on what to do if you can't find the right color. You're gonna to wanna to grab yourself white elastic. And this is what most people do. They use a white elastic and they dye it or they do a sublimation printing. And this is where you print off your graphic and you heat press it onto your material or fabric. But I'm not gonna get too far into actual heat pressing and doing that process in the video. But if that's something you'd wanna see, definitely comment down below and I'll make a future video out of it because you can actually utilize that on all your garments. You're gonna need one key ring. I use three quarter inch in the video. You can use bigger or smaller. It really depends on the look you're going for and how many keys you're actually gonna be putting on your wallet. You're gonna need ribbon or webbing, and I recommend getting a quarter inch width or smaller. You want it small enough to fit through your key ring with no problem. And there are a few more options. You can use cord or leather. I'm actually using leather in the video because if you're making the lanyard, you're probably gonna have leftover leather, so you might as well utilize that if you're using that option. And I'll get more into those supplies when we start making the lanyard. And last, you're gonna need your pattern. This pattern is a free pattern and it's available at properfitclothing.com, so definitely go download that. And you don't have to sign up for anything, you just go to the link down below, download it, and you're ready to go. So once you have your pattern downloaded, it's time to move into cutting. Cut out all of your pattern pieces on the black line and we're gonna start with the main pocket panel and the secondary pocket panel. For the wallet, we're gonna be using three inch and two and a half inch elastic. For the main pocket panel, we're gonna be using three inch elastic. Place the pattern on your elastic and cut. Repeat this process for the secondary pocket panel on your two and a half inch elastic. And the key is to make sure that both of these panels are cut as even as possible. Next, we're gonna place a secondary pocket on the main panel and grab your choice of material to connect the key ring. I'm gonna be using a small strip of leather to connect my key ring. Slide your material through your key ring and we're gonna place it on the upper half of the main pocket panel in between the secondary pocket and the top edge. Line up the main and secondary panels as even as possible and you can leave about a quarter inch of your key ring material hanging off the edge. Sew it at a quarter inch seam allowance and be sure to tack at the start and the end. From here, you can trim off your key ring material and neaten up that edge as a whole. You want that edge to be as flat as possible so cards don't catch it on the way in and out. And the last little tip is to use a lighter on the edge to prevent it from fraying. But it's always best to check what your material is made of before you take a lighter to it. After neatening up the edge, go ahead and flip the right sides out. Do a quick look around, make sure the top edges are looking good and strong. The leather strip is actually sticking out too far for my taste, but this is an easy fix for the next one. But they're really that simple to make. Slide your cards in it, slide some money in it, add a key, and you're all set to go. And the elastic holds everything nice in place so you don't have to worry about losing anything when you're taking it in and out of your pocket. Next, I'm going to show you a really quick technique on how to brand it. I'm going to be using a branding iron and a scrap piece of leather. And this is a nice long-term solution for branding all of your projects. You just press it to your leather after heating it up and trim around the outside edge of your logo. Next, I'm going to secure it down with a little bit of fabric glue and add it to my secondary main pocket on the right or the left edge. Press it down firmly and keep in mind the seam allowance, so place it on the inside of the seam allowance. And this is just going to keep it in place for a more precise stitch. And I'm using an edge presser foot, but I didn't have the right one, so I actually went too far in on my logo because I actually don't use this logo a lot, so I don't have the correct presser foot, but all you do is go around the outside edge and try to make it as neat as possible. And after stitching, you can stretch your material and your logo will be securely in place. And I think adding the logo really makes it look like a complete store-bought product. But this is just one method for adding your logo, so get creative with it and find something that works for you. The supplies you're gonna need for the chapstick holder are similar to the supplies for the wallet, and I recommend an inch and a half 
or an inch and five eighths elastic. Both of these work great for a chapstick. I've tested them out and they work perfectly. They go right up to the edges without going over. You'll need one key ring and I recommend matching the key ring size to your wallet size. So a three quarter inch if you're using that and your ribbon or webbing, or you can use your cord or leather if you're doing that option. So cut out your pattern piece and let's get started. Grab your chapstick main panel and your elastic. Make sure you use the correct size of elastic. The three inches too big, the two inches too big, and the one and a half works just perfect. Mainly you want to make sure you can take the cap off and twist the bottom without the elastic overlapping. Using the pattern, cut the piece out of your one and a half inch elastic. Grab your key ring and key ring material. I'm using leather again, so I'm going to slide it through my key ring and add it about a quarter inch away from the top edge. And it's best to adjust the key ring material at this point so you don't have to do too much adjusting later on. When you're satisfied with the placement, stitch it on a quarter inch seam allowance, tacking heavily at the start and the end. Heavy tacking is really key here. Go ahead and trim your key ring material, clean up the edge, and flip it right side out. And that's going to complete your chapstick holder. It's a super simple project, but it's really useful and fun to make. Just another quick thing to throw on your lanyard. The supplies for the lighter holder are similar to the chapstick holder, but you can actually use a wider elastic. And we're gonna utilize a secondary fabric, and this is gonna be your two inch elastic. You'll need one key ring, same size as the wallet, and lastly, your ribbon, webbing, leather, or cord to hold it on with. So cut out your pattern, and let's get started. Grab your lighter holder main panel, and the same thing goes for this. Use an elastic that's gonna be a little bit wider. We're using the two inch elastic. You can use the one and a half, but I like trying to cover up most of the lighter so it has a better hold. Place the pattern on your elastic and cut it out. Grab your keyring material and keyring, feed your material through the keyring, place it a quarter inch away from the top edge. If you already made the chapstick holder, it's going to go in the same exact spot. Make sure the keyring material is at the length you prefer and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Just like all of them so far, make sure you tack heavily at the start and the end of that stitch. Trim off the keyring material, clean up the edge, and flip it right side out. It's going to look similar to the chapstick one, but it's a tad bit longer and wider. And your lighter holder is complete. Another super simple project. And you can actually use it for more than just a lighter. It fits perfectly on my scissors, and I might just throw it at a station because I always seem to walk around with my scissors, and I just leave them in area. So if I just strap it to a station, I'll always know they're there. All right, moving on to the supplies for the last project which is the lanyard. These are super fun to make and really easy, and you can make a lot with very minimal supplies. You'll need one lobster clasp, and I'm using a half inch in the video. I find it to be the perfect size, but you can go bigger if you're trying to add a lot of stuff onto this clasp. You'll need one yard of a half inch webbing, and I found a half inch to be the perfect size. It's just small enough to make it nice, lightweight, and compactable. And lastly, you're gonna need your leather or vinyl if you can find a nice vinyl. I'm using leather in the video, and I'll have links below where you can buy just a very small amount and utilize it for this entire project. So cut out your pattern piece and let's get started. Grab your lanyard leather base panel and cut the pattern out of leather. Can be fairly hard to get these perfect arches, but you can use simple end trimmers to cut it out if you're trying to make a lot of these. What you do is find a size that matches up with the pattern and then you hammer it out on both sides. And you can actually do this for the entire piece by using hollow leather dies. This is the best solution for making it perfect every single time. You can also use these for your key ring material if you're using leather. These kits come with a bunch of different shapes and sizes, so you should have everything you need. The main goal is to get the base leather panel to wrap perfectly around the bar of your lobster clasp and we're going to be using a half inch webbing half inch works perfectly with the pattern it allows the top of the base panel to hang over the webbing just a little bit you can use one inch webbing or ribbon but you're going to want to widen the top of that base just a little bit so it hangs off the edge of that one inch webbing once you decided on your webbing, go ahead and cut it at your preferred length. This is going to be based on what you're using it for. If you want it longer or hanging out of your pocket or just around your neck. I cut mine at about 20 inches. Line up the ends and sandwich your leather base in between those ends. We're going to stitch the sides and inside edge. Just like the leather patch, we're going to use fabric glue to tack it down so that way everything stays in place so it makes it easier to get a nice clean top stitch. Add the amount of glue based on the type of glue you're using, sandwich it on the end, and wait for it to dry before sewing. I'm going to be using an edge presser foot so that way I can get nice clean stitches along those side and inside edges. And you can stitch at whatever length you want to the outside edge. I recommend stitching at least on the inside of a quarter inch. 
and with time this will look a lot nicer it takes practice to really get this looking good and you can also brand your lanyard to add a nice little detailed touch i riveted a patch on and i could also use this as another little hook too the lanyard really brings all the projects together because you can just go ahead and clip everything onto that lanyard and you're set to go and there you have it all your projects are complete thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions about any of these projects definitely comment down below and i'll get back to you or send me a chat on the proper fit clothing website and we'll definitely get back to you there but like always thank you so much for supporting the channel and watching the video and if you ever have any projects you want to see us make definitely send it our way and we'll make it happen for you but until then we're going to keep the videos coming at you so we'll see you next time